I created this video series on the psychology of delusions and other mental disorders uh, such as fallacies and any other related uh, issues uh, to address an, an, a, an issue that uh, I my personally have not found any um, anyone addressing. Um, when it comes to delusional disorders, most of the information out there um, either discusses people who are afflicted with delusional disorders and um, describes how they're um, impaired and how they have bizarre or unusual uh, beliefs and um, other information out there may discuss the psychology or the reason behind their belief, um, but none of it really addresses um, how exactly those people can uh, be helped or how people who interact with such individuals can help them or help themselves uh, to uh, work with such individuals. Um, so I created this series to discuss delusional disorder, the psychology behind it, and to give some tools for individuals with delusional disorders, as well as those living with those with delusional disorders um, or fallacious thinking, um, to try and recover from it, and or to at least deal with um, such people or to deal with the condition themselves if they themselves have it. Um, again, like I said, most of the information out there either um, talks about the individual with the delusional disorder as a patient, as, a, uh, as an afflicted person, uh, but doesn't discuss too much, of, uh, uh, too much about the hope that they have of ever recovering from that, uh, their condition and doesn't give the individuals who deal with such uh, people who are married to them or who have to live with them or interact with them on a daily basis, either at work or in personal um, life, um, uh, does not provide them with too, with, uh, too many tips. Um, it just uh, pretty much tells them you're dealing with somebody who has a delusional disorder and try to deal with it. Um, so I'm going to try and uh, um, actually deal with um, the psychology behind it and provide some practical help uh, in dealing with it. Um, before actually getting to the uh, to the actual delusional disorders, um, I do want to um, give a little bit of an introduction. Uh, what I'm first going to do is break down the um, delusional disorders and and then I'm going to give an outline of the content of any future videos that will appear in the series. Um, there are two types of delusional disorders. Um, there are primary delusional disorders and there are secondary delusional disorders. Um, in brief, and I'll explain in more detail in, the, in a future video, um, a primary delusional disorder is um, a person who has a, a delusional disorder in and of itself with no, uh, there's nothing driving it. The person is delusional for no reason at all. Um, a secondary delusional disorder is where a person is only has a delusion as a way of explaining uh, different parts of uh, their lives. For example, um, there's the um, rare but um, often discussed case of the person who believed that everyone in their life, uh, in her life, um, was replaced, had been replaced by identical individuals who uh, looked and acted just like their loved one, that person's loved ones, but were simply not that love, that loved one. Um, for example, the person believed that her mother was not her mother. It was somebody who looked like her mother, who acted like her mother, but was not her mother. And this delusion, um, I forget the name at this time, um, but this delusion was a secondary delusion. 
um, what happened was the person had a a uh, disruption in the way information is transmitted from the eyes uh, to the brain. The, which it usually goes to two areas. One is the um, empathetic area, um, a portion of the brain, and that helps the person understand um, and uh, to understand the emotional aspect of what they're seeing, to understand that the person they're seeing is their parent and how they feel about their parent, whether it be positive, negative, um, or uh, whatever the case may be. The second is the actual visual cortex uh, or component of the brain where the person simply sees the individual they're seeing. So this person would only um, had an issue where they, um, the information stopped going to the emotional part of the brain and went directly and exclusively to the visual aspect of the brain. So this person was seeing um, the same people she, the, that she had seen up until now, um, but was not registering any emotion. And to explain that, she created a delusion around that, that everybody in her life looked and acted and sounded and behaved like everyone she knew up until now, uh, but was not that person because the brain had to make sense of the fact that they, it was seeing the same exact people but was not registering anything emotional. Um, the way they discovered um, the reason behind this delusion um, was by discovering that when the person would hear her mother on the phone, um, she would then register um, the fact that that was her mother. And it turned out that the um, the pathways between the auditory nerve uh, going to the brain did not was not disrupted. It would go to the emotional part of the brain, and it would also go to the auditory part of the brain. So when it was auditory only, the brain would then register the emotional part of that sound as well as the auditory part of that sound, the audible part of that sound. But when it came to visual, there was a disruption, and the brain would only register the visual part of that um, of that uh, experience, and uh, would have to create a delusion to explain why it was seeing somebody familiar but not feeling what it uh, usually would feel about that person. Um, so that is a secondary delusion, where the person does not have a delusionary disorder in and of itself. The person only has a delusionary disorder in an attempt to explain and make sense of something in it uh, uh, to make sense of something. Um, a primary delusion, delusionary disorder would be where the person actually has a delusionary disorder irrespective of the attempt to explain anything. Um, <clears throat> the second thing to understand is the issue of hijack. And what I mean by that is um, the brain is like a computer chip. It can become, it can be infected with a virus, with a mental virus, if you will, and depending on how much of the brain is hijacked will depend on whether the person has any insight into their condition and whether um, the person has, uh, and the level of hope the person has of recovery. Um, for example, if the brain is some is partially hijacked, there is still a portion of it that can objectively view the hijacked portion and can feel that something is not right. And as a result, it will uh, the person uh, or a therapist or um, or anyone interacting with that person can sort of speak to the unhijacked or un affected part of that person and um, provide that person with insight into their condition. If the brain is fully hijacked, that's where um, someone would say um, there's no one to talk to, which means the person is completely consumed by uh, their delusion or by whatever their, condi their mental condition is. And there's n not to say that there's no hope, but there's less hope because there isn't any part of the brain that has not been affected by that delusion. Um, usually when the delusion is either not 
full blown or when it's caught early, um, there is still part of the person that can be talked to and can uh, have what is what's known in psychology as insight into um, their own condition. Um, if the person has no insight, then it's pretty much like not to sound crass, but like talking to the walls, meaning the person will actually incorporate any um, information, any attempt to provide insight as part of the delusion. For example, as a practical example, um, if somebody believes that the FBI is wiretapping their house or listening to their conversations, so that person has a delusionary disorder if that is in fact not true. Um, now, somebody may want to help that person by ripping apart their walls and ceilings and showing them that there are no wiretaps, there are no bugs, nobody's listening to their conversation. And what that would do in that case, if the person is partially hijacked, they may then realize that they've been delusional and that um, they may want to work through why they have that persecutory delusion, which we'll get to in further detail in a future video. Um, but if the person is completely hijacked, then what they'll, their reaction may be something like, you see, they actually are so good at it that they're, that we can't even find the wiretaps. The wiretaps are so well hidden that we couldn't even find it after destroying the walls and ceilings and all the furniture in the house. So the fact that no wiretaps were found will actually reinforce the delusion and, um, and actually show that the wiretaps are not only there, but they're so well hidden. So that's an example of where um, the person can either use a um, in, um, evidence to the contrary um, of their to their delusion, um, and either gain insight into the fact that to the, that their thought is deluded, or can use that information to actually reinforce their delusion. Um, <clears throat> So that's uh, another aspect of it, um, and then there are other ty There are um, another, another issue is the actual different types of delusions. Uh, there are many, many types: uh, persecutory, somatic, and we'll get into each one individually. Um, each one is fascinating, um, and each one can be recovered from um, as long as it's understood um, how the delusion came about and why the person has it and we can then uh, what I like to call claw back from that deluded state. Um, just telling somebody that they're deluded or and the person realizing that they have a delusion um, is not enough because the delusion is almost um, magnetic. It sucks the person back in. They may actually come out of it for a few seconds when they realize it is a delusion and then be sucked right back into it and it's a powerful suction um, that only the person can understand or somebody afflicted can understand. So it, it's a gradual clawback. Um, there's also, um, there are also the, there's also the, um, dif uh, different, um, the differentiation between people who are functional and not functional, uh, that people whose delusions are limited to one area of their life and they can go to work and function as, uh, in society. Um, and the only part of their lives that are that's affected would be the part that is affected by the delusion itself. Um, while other people may be so consumed with the delusion that they would actually um, go as far as quitting their job or un being unable to hold down a job or um, co-mingle with others. Um, for example, if somebody believes that um, others are uh, are talking about them. So there are people who can go to work and then uh, actually have to leave their job because they will believe that everyone on the subway or in the train to work or on the bus to work is talking about them or listening to them or thinking about them and then everyone at work is whispering about them to the point that they actually have to leave their job and can't socialize anymore. Um, then there are people who have one specific delusion uh, that would not affect any other part of their life. For example, um, they may believe that um, that the government is trying to vaccinate children to reduce population by the year 2020 to 500,000 people. 
Um, so they'll their work, their um, employment, their social life will be um, in perfect order, but they will all they will believe that um, Bill Gates and President Obama are trying to reduce the world population for whatever reason by means of vaccination and encouraging the flu vaccine and whatever other conspiratorial delusion the person may have. Um, so that's where that's an example of a delusion that would affect one specific part of a person's life. Um, then there's the issue of the inner child. Um, usually, and again, I want to, that is a whole separate issue, um, which may end up being its own series. Um, the inner child is something that, again, if there's not too much information about that, but that I believe is a fundamental part of psychology where um, most of what is fully hijacked, if any part of the person is fully hijacked, it's usually that inner child. Um, there's a saying, give me the child till he's seven and I'll give you the man. Um, up until the child turns, um, during the developmental years for the for argument's sake, um, <clears throat> a child and an individual develops it, 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 his or her outlook on life um, that will usually stay embedded in their psyche for the rest of their life. Um, so for example, if a child is constantly scared um, or abandoned or neglected, um, that fear of neglect, of being neglected or abandoned or shamed or guilt or it's, uh, whatever it may be, well, will remain embedded in the person's psyche for the rest of their life. Um, there are circumstances may change and they may forget about that part of their life and move on, but that little inner child is still there, is still scared, still feels guilty, still feels afraid, still feels shame, still fears abandonment, still fears neglect. And the issue will usually be will usually be in the inner child and once a person gets in touch with that inner child which we'll get to um they can usually talk to that child and embrace that child and explain to him or her um how whatever he or she believes which is what the adult now believes um was only based on a an unhealthy upbringing um but can then re-educate that child um with love compassion and sometimes even discipline um to understand life in a healthy and more um, realistic way. And that can help somebody um, claw back out of a delusion. So um, that's another differentiation. And then there's one final one that I'll get to in this in introductory video. Um, and I'll get to each one individually in future videos. Um, but the difference between bizarre and non-bizarre delusions. There are um, bizarre delusions um, that would include um, for example, that Martians are um, listening to our conversations and they want to invade Earth and inhabit our bodies or whatever the case is. That's a non, that is a bizarre delusion. Um, a non-bizarre delusion is one where um, the person believes something that may actually be true. For example, even the, um, the, that the FBI is listening to their conversations. The FBI does listen to some people's conversations. That's how they prevent terrorist attacks. Um, they get warrants and they listen to some conversations. That's politically debatable whether they should be listening to the ones they do, whether they shouldn't. I'm not getting into that right now. That is not my here in my domain. Um, but because there is a realistic basis to that delusion, because the FBI does admittedly listen to some people's conversations, um, the person believing that the FBI list is listening to their conversation, to his or her conversation, is not bizarre. It is, it is delusional because they, the FBI is most likely not listening to that person's conversation. Um, but the fact that the FBI w does listen to some people's conversations uh, would make that a non-bizarre delusion. So to summarize, again, there are um, there are different types of delusions. Um, most the, of the information out there does not offer help. It either stigmatizes people with delusions, um, uh, tells people with delusions that they should try to, um, how to deal with people with delusions, but not how to help them, just how to work around them, how to walk on eggshells. And, they, and ironically, they'll tell you not to walk on eggshells, but what they're really telling you is how to walk on those eggshells. Um, and then there are different types of delusions. 
and most of them can be helped as long as the person is willing to help themselves uh, as long as they're not fully hijacked and even when they are fully hijacked um, as I've said um, it's usually the inner child that's fully hijacked but the adult is not fully hijacked so unless somebody is completely um, psychotic um, in which case the only help is institutionalization or medication or whatever the case may be uh, as long as it's somebody who's functioning in society there is hope there is help for the people suffering from the condition or the people living with people suffering with the condition. And I hope that this um, video series uh, will be helpful to those um, either living with the with delusional disorders or living with people who have delusional disorders. Um, again, I just want to clarify that this does not take the place of um, the advice of your medical or mental health professional. Um, this is uh, just information and I hope you find it helpful um, and if you have any questions please feel free to comment below and I'll make every effort to respond in kind. Thank you very much.